Wyatt. He gives in like five, four, three, two, one. Welcome to Wyatt. And I'm your host, Wyatt O'Brien Evans. Brrr, woof, goddammit, woof, woof, woof. Ha, ha, ha. My listeners, my listeners, my listeners. Today's Wyatt is another installment in my series, Bedtime with Porn Guys. Let me say it again. Bedtime with Porn Guys. Oh, hell yeah. You know, adult entertainment or porn can be an intrinsic, a fundamental part of the lives of more than a few gay or SGL, same gender loving men, for a variety of reasons. That's why I feature the topic on Wyatt. Now, today's hot, H A W T, hot man is a returning guest whose last appearance resulted in the most popular Wyatt episode to date. Oh, yeah. Well, just who am I talking about? It's Mr. Tancredo Buff, Mr. Caliente. He's a popular masculine Puerto Rican daddy with that tone and fit bedroom body who puts the triple X into sexy. Now, Mr. Buff sets the screen and your nether regions, your loins on freaking fire. And when he was last here, we learned that what makes him even more interesting is that he joined the adult entertainment biz later in life as a man of a certain age. Now, Mr. Buff <laughs> will join us in a hot minute or so. And yo, after the show, visit my online home, WyattEvans.com. That's W-Y-A-T-T-E-V-A-N-S.com. The go to a destination for LGBTQ news, features, and entertainment. Now, WyattEvans.com is visited by over 100 countries on the regular. All I can say is, yeah, baby. At WyattEvans.com, you will find my smoking hot, nothing can tear us apart series of novels. Now, the current installment is titled Frenzy! Yes, Frenzy. Frenzy is chock full of masculine romance, intrigue, danger, and the blazing heat of a thousand suns, of erotic passion and steaming nastiness. And my listeners, my listeners, my listeners, I'm hard at work right now penning the sequel, the new sequel to my Nothing Can Tear Us Apart series of novels. You're going to get more masculine romance, intrigue, danger, steam, and nastiness. You know, Stevie Wonder used to say hotter than July. Well, this is going to be hotter than that. So stay tuned because I'll have, you know, updates and information and all that good stuff as the weeks progress. Oh, good golly, Miss Molly, y'all. Guess who's back is my sometimes sidekick, Madam Pussy Galore, Cock-a-Doodle-Doo, Drag Queen Supreme. Hey, what's shaking, bacon? What's up? Yes, yes, I'm back. Okay, okay, Mr. Well, Mr. Wyatt O'Brien Evans, as Diana Ross sings, it's my turn to see what I can see. Well, Miss Puss Puss, what you really should see is the dough. The dough right down that hall. You should see the dough. Oh, Mr. Well, Mr. Wyatt O'Brien, just, just, just clutch the pearls and stop the train and just shut up. Now, I cannot wait. I can't wait to talk to Mr. Buff again. And he, 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 I mean, he is well buff. 
And you know what? I have a confession to make to all of our wonderful listeners out there. And I want to thank the listeners for sending me these wonderful letters because I'm more popular than you, Mr. Well, Mr. White O'Brien. What I want to say is that I just, my confession is this, is that I just love me some Puerto Rican daddies. They're just so, I mean, Mr. Buff is just so caliente. He's caliente. Yay. Hi. You are not talking to Mr. Buff this time around. It ain't happening. What? What? I'm Mr. Well, Mr. Wyatt O'Brien Evans. I'm, I'm just clutching now. I'm grabbing my pearls at this point. What do you mean I'm not going to have a little tete-a-tete with Mr. Buff? I mean, I have to talk to him. Miss Thing, aren't you already in a committed relationship with that, that, what's his name, that turbo lift person? I mean, why do you want to flirt with our guests? Oh, Mr. Well, you silly, silly boy, Mr. Wyatt O'Brien Evans. Just be quiet. Now listen to me. Listen to me here. My beau, Mr. Turbo Lift, and that's his real name. It's a real person. It is a real person. My beau, Mr. Turbo Lift, is not here at the moment. Ergo, I can do whatever I want. And besides that big old swell Puerto Rican Mr. Buff, that poppy makes me swim. Oh, makes my 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 makes my breasts assist, and I mean both of my breasts assist to sweat <laughs> and then swell and then get rather perky. You know what I mean, Mister What, Mister White O'Brien Evans? Well, do you do you, Madam Pussy Galore, cock a doodle doo, so called drag queen supreme? I want you to listen to me. And I want you to listen good. I'm almost losing my voice because I don't believe this is happening. Well, here it is. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Ah, 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 ah. Mr. Wow, you ready? Hitch. Ah, ah. As Arnold says, get out. Get out. Get the hell out. And don't fall in them shoes. <laughs> Y'all. She gone. Thank God she gone. All right, now let's turn to our special guest, Mr. Tancredo Buff. Y'all, this gentleman continues to accumulate a diverse and uh -uh, highly entertaining, to say the least, body of work. Mr. Buff consistently brings the fiery nastiness to the productions of various adult entertainment companies, including, get this, Forbidden Funk Media, Black Zone Daddies, and Raw Nasty Fuckers. This performer is one bad mother. Shut your mouth! Oh, hell yeah. You know what I'm saying? You feeling me? I know you do. And Mr. Buff has been the cover man for various adult publications and has been nominated, get this, for multiple Raven's Eden Awards, which are major honors in adult entertainment. And on top of all that, he's got one hell of a passionate and enthusiastic fan base. So without further ado, Wyatt has the distinct pleasure of welcoming back Mr. Tancredo Buff, Talk at me. How the hell are ya? Hello, Wyatt, and hello to all the listeners of the show. Well, Poppy, we're so glad to have you back. And you know what? Let me tell you something. Your first appearance on Wyatt has been my most popular episode to date with thousands, thousands of YouTube viewers. Thank you for that. Oh, I'm really honored. You know, I like the to the fans to hear about me and about the industry, what, what I know. And I'm really uh, humble for that. I thank you to all, all the listeners uh, here and around the world. Well, you know what? You're my good buddy and you're a hot daddy. So we want <laughs> <laughs> listen, listen, you're a hot Puerto Rican daddy. So we want to know all about you. So, you know, since you, you were here some months ago, my friend, how have you been doing? What have you been up to? 
Well, uh, since I last appearance of the show, uh, as I mentioned that I had been in the last past years more involved some some personal uh, stuff, right. including that I went into a regular job. Uh, I got to sustain to pay bills. Sure. And also, well, it's well known for everybody that it's almost three years that I, I got formally married to, yeah. my, to my husband. Congratulations. And, but at the same time, uh, I have been following up what's going on in the industry. And you know that the, the last, uh, if I could say, fashion in the industry is to create your own videos. Right. And, and suddenly we see uh, pages like only fans, just for fans, uh, even porn hops have to adopt to go through that way uh, with with their followers. And I have a very good, uh, very good friends, uh, actor Tony Cruz, that he is uh, dedicated to create his own page. And most of the time he has uh, look for the local talent in my area and mm. he's a very good friend of mine and I I, I decided to uh, help help with him in, in a couple of production not only for him but also for other people who has pages in just for fans and, ah. and that had been my last two uh, my, my last two uh, works I have one video with Tony in his uh, Just For Fan page uh, of Tony Cruz. Mm -hmm. I have another with an actor of New York City called Gunnar Gunter. That uh, he came, he, he's actually from here, from Buffalo, but uh, also um, do a lot of production in the east side in, in, New, York, in New York City. And mm -hmm. he came especially at that time to do uh, one scene with uh, the Buffalo talent, and I had the honor to work for him. And I got to say that their videos has been very, very uh, largely viewed. And also I have seen a, a very nice increase in my fan base, especially in Twitter. And I receive a lot of messages, not only from people around here, I receive from people around the world, even people who know me for a long time, Ask me, me to through Twitter uh, after they see the scene and they like it very much. Well, Tancredo, give us the names of those two uh, scenes that you created, and would you give us a very brief synopsis of each one? What is each one all about? Well, the scene with Tony uh, was uh, Daddy and Daddy. Uh, scene mm. uh it was it was filmed in his apartment mm. uh the idea came initially from me when i tried to take off with my own page which i've been still working on it and we did this experiment of a scene with uh multiple cameras in his in his bedroom and yeah uh, tony the uh, uh i was supposed to visit tony and uh, have a have a uh, mess it up around, mm. and it came really really good. Uh, mm. and Tony edited the video and he posted as his one of his first videos from his just for fan page. The uh, in months later, uh, came a uh, Garner happens to be from from the area. He came visiting. And he's a very good friend of Tony. And he was asking for uh, shooting a kind of game bang mm -hmm. for, for him. And Tony he contacted me and I said, Would you like, uh, why, why it's interesting shooting with him? And I said, oh, yes, of course. And this one is very interesting. I had to make the, the story because it's a good laugh. Tell us, come on. Okay. Uh, they it was supposed to start shooting like at, at seven o'clock right yeah uh, it was still in, in early this year i was working in my job mm -hmm. so the idea was that i was coming from my job go to my house change and go 
to Tony's apartment, which what I, uh, I did. But what happened that when I was in the middle of going to to the to the apartment, Tony already had started shooting with what? with other guys. Yeah. Okay. So and he te he texted me, and I said, "Time." I said, uh, "I was texting him. I'm on my way. I'm on my way. Uh, wait for me." But anyway, the the thing is that. I uh, when I was getting into the apartment, somebody already left. Tony was shooting with him, and then I came. I came in, so the sequence of my arrival came so good that was included in the video. Well, so it, how how many men were in the when you got there? How many men were already there? Well, when one left, there was only Tony and him right. playing. And then I get into the scene. Tony retrieved. I did that part like if it was a one-on-one -on -one with, with, with Gunner. And it was so good. It felt so, so really good to work at that. And we kept that working there. And then Tony joined us to finish the scene. So and how many men totally, though, were in that scene? It's my understanding that at the end, they had five. Oh, and what now? what's the name of that scene? And what's the name of the other scene that you did? Well, the the, the first scene, they don't have a, a formal title. Ah. It's just a, a references of where they can find it. The scene with Tony Cruz is in the Just, just for Fan page of Tony Cruz. Right. And the one of uh, Gunner is in Gunner's Gunter's uh, uh, just for fan page. It was made just for just for him. And okay. My uh, and it, it, it we are expecting we are planning to do another one sh uh, soon uh, during the summer. And why I expected that I, it could be for my page. That's great. Okay, now let's do this. Let's do a rewind. Um, what I find Tan Credo so interesting about you, I find a lot of things interesting about you because I've known you for so long. You broke into porn as a man of a certain age. I mean, usually guys begin their adult entertainment careers in their 20s. How old were you when you entered the industry and what compelled you to do it at that point in your life? Well, when I started looking for, I was still in my late twenties and thirties. However, when I get my first opportunity, I was already forty-eight. Oh wow! And, but uh, many people will look at me and they don't think that I have my that age, and, right? And, and because because I tr I try to keep a very good pace of life. Mm -hmm. Despite, uh, despite all the uh, agitation, work, family, <laughs> yeah. and also I, I always bring to the uh, to the attention of people that yes, I have silver hair, uh, but that silver hair I had it since I was ten years old. Really? Yes. Some of this silver now is popping up because of my age. Right. But in the truth is that when I was younger, my hair was at a kind of combination of a, a very dark brown with those grays, like a kind of hidden inside. Right. And at a certain times so, of my life, I have had a little longer hair. I have a mullet. It, it, but now that I have short hair, and of course, uh, no, I'm not 20 anymore. <laughs> so I got, I, I still, I got my, my silvers and, you know, I don't feel afraid about that because I, I like, I like what had the way I look with my silver hair. Yeah. Really. I mean, it, it makes you that, I mean, it emphasizes, emphasizes that you're a daddy, but exactly. still, Still, my question to you is why at that point in your life did you say, I'm going to do porn? 
Well, it, it was a curiosity that always was with me for a long, long time. Way and when I what I did was in certain points of my life, I made some attempt that how how I can connect with porn oh. because one of the things is that I connected with porn uh, through nobody. Yeah, it was just me searching, getting into the uh, studio websites. Uh, filing an application, making f- own photos. Uh, it, that's the way that I did. And when finally I got the opportunity, I say, yes, I'm I'm not going to pass that opportunity. It's something that I always wanted to do. And uh, so I did. Well, you know what? We're glad you did. Now, look. <laughs> <laughs> In an interview, you stated, my friend, and I quote, and this is you talking, I endeavor to perform sexually in a way to satisfy others who watch and make them wish they were part of the action, end quote. Papi, let's jump into that. Because that's for who I work. I don't work for the pleasure of myself. I don't work for the pleasure that if I am do uh, a scene with a a, a, a name star uh, or privilege or that, it's a job. That's the job of porn uh, adult entertainers to seduce the viewer. If you, ah, if I you like don't, that. if you don't do that, ah. you're not doing a good job. No matter if you are younger if you are skinner ah. if you have a big dick if you have a bubble ass if you don't know how to do it you don't project it to the person who is viewing you then you are not doing a uh, you're not doing a good job let me say two things about that i'm glad you brought that up number one i like the word seduction because that's what it's all about yes. and number two i like big asses i like big bubble butt asses and you can and you cannot <laughs> lie. <laughs> what, 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 what did you say? And you cannot lie. <laughs> that, that, listen, listen, listen. I tell. Look, I tell of the truth. If yes, <laughs> it's a, a, a reference sort of, of a song. The people who is listening and know the song that <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God. Okay. Well, well, question for you here. I Okay. I don't think I could do porn. I really don't think I could. So my hat is off to you. What was your first on screen experience like? Were you anxious? Did you experience trepidation or did you just say to yourself, I can't freaking wait to do this? You know that it, it, I think at one time we mentioned that in is it, it was kind of, uh thinking when the moment was coming coming in i said i hope i don't bomb i Ooh. hope i don't bomb because yes i was I, I i when it was getting closer i kind of freak out uh. but um there's no turning back you know that's what i wanted so i have to give credit to the actor that worked with me that day because he relaxed me very well Mm. And it happens that when that uh, camera turned on, we had a hell of a chemistry. Mm. And we we worked for about maybe a while doing that that scene. It was I didn't want to finish it because it was so, so good to work with him. What was the name of this guy? But I tried to remember his name. It it, it been, been a long time and I know that he's He's retired now from from the industry. Oh, okay. but I, 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 the 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 name escaped from my mind. But he he was a he was a very uh, uh very frequent talent for uh black for the people of Raw Nasty Fuckers and for several of the other uh, websites uh, that that they were managing at that time. Well, that's okay that you don't remember his name because this is all about you anyway, Mr. Buff. It's all about you. <laughs> and and sometimes, some, sometimes it, it, it kind of, 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 of 
uh, I like to honor the people who, who has worked with me. Certainly. Because it's not, it's not everything about me. It's everything about the team, the teamwork. Absolutely. And I'm so glad you said that. Um, actually, that's very gracious of you. Let me, Tancredo, after the filming was over, did you like analyze or assess your performance? Did you say something to yourself like, huh, I could have done that better or mm, I could have done this better? Uh, there's always a point of the autocritic, but it doesn't happen after the, it doesn't happen immediately after you shoot. It mostly happens if you see it on the screen. And that mm. is something that I, I am not really, uh, good on that. I can sit down and watch my video and start say. Oh no, I should have done this this way. No, I should have done that that way. Because anyway, it's not made for me, it's made for the the audience. Mm -hmm. Now, when the audience come and say, Oh, I like very much what you did with with somebody or this, that is when I say, Okay, I did a good job. It, it, it for for to give you an example, uh one of the, the famous scenes that I have done. That being ro running around the the world <laughs> is is with my my friend uh, Scott Reynolds. Okay. Scott Reynolds is the, the one of the silver fox of, of, of <laughs> porn. And in that scene, we did it with so much enthusiasm. And still, one day, Scott and I uh, watched the scene together, and <laughs> we would say, and we were autocritic ourselves. <laughs> or what we can do or what we, we can do. And, and suddenly we were saying, well, it's, it's an okay scene. But you can't believe me that after all this time, I keep receiving messages from fans all mm. over the world talking about that particular scene with Scott Reynolds. Okay, and does that scene have a title, a name to it? It, it was included in, uh, in one of the... Uh, Bareback com complex uh, videos, uh, and it, it, it was calling uh, "Daddy to Daddy to Daddy." Mm, okay, and I did that, that scene with Scott Reynolds, and it happens that not only we had a great time, but uh, Scott and I turned into very good friends, and we uh, and we talk each other constantly lately. We have been very apart because of the COVID and sure. most of the time what I used to do was uh, when I go to New York City, I have to stop by his apartment or we meet in a restaurant and have coffee. Again, uh, 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 our best conversations are through coffee. <laughs> ah, well, you know what? Um, what you just said is a perfect segue to what I want to talk about now. First of all, though, let me backtrack just slightly. I love it. So that clip <laughs> had a, has a life of its own. Yes, but, it is. Okay, okay, here's my issue with some porn, Tancredo. To me, some porn just doesn't come across, doesn't seem organic. It doesn't seem natural. It doesn't seem real. The viewer is left with like, dang, true situations aren't like this. They're not like this. The production values of the scene are like pitiful. The directing is sloppy. And that so-called porn star ain't all that. So my question to you is, what are the elements of a believable, well-produced, quality production that fully engages the viewer and turns him the fuck on? Sexiness, chemistry, so there's two elements that I have to go go through. Number three, uh, I can say that you have to represent what they are. And even though that, yes, the majority of the porn is done with young people, or dep depends on the fantasy that they want to create, the tr reality is that not all the people are buff or muscle. Or mm -hmm. skinny, and it it makes it it, it makes uh, feel like a 
instead of uh, inside to the seduction is more uh, inside to the why I'm not like him or uh -huh. why I'm not like and, and and I know that there are people who not necessarily a muscle or you know were figure that they uh give a lot of sexiness and a lot of sensuality mm -hmm. and i i can tell you two example uh, a good friend uh, luis vega that he has done porn for bear films and for monster cup that guy has a lot of sexiness mm. and, and he's not muscle he's just a stocky guy and right. he is so beautiful and so sexy and so ravaged and another uh, person who i work with a hunter for monster cup m is a man that is the, the the typical bear that you see everywhere mm -hmm. and he has a lot of sexiness and it, it was delightful to work with him very delightful oh now Tancredo, you are verse versatile in a good deal of your screen work. Do you prefer that? And if so, why? You know that I label myself as a versatile because I like I, I, I like to, to top and I like to bottle. You know, I have a very nice dick that works yeah, very do. well. Right. And I have a, an ass that can resist big 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 trains there. Yes, and you let do. me tell you, I I have had my shares in private and in film. <laughs> <laughs> oh my! But I... but it, 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 and because I like I like the sexuality in 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 any way. I don't know. That is something that I have learned from from long time. And I think a long time ago I told you that one of the the porn actors that I always look at, have looked at in the past was Jack Wrangler. Right. And you know that Jack Wrangler, he, he, was, he was not only sexiness, uh, virility, but also he could give the ass and enjoy it like a man. Take it like a man. Take you it know, like a I, man. Yeah, and I like it. You know, I, 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 like, I like it anyway. You know, I, I like sexuality simply. Simply for that. That's what I, I label myself versatile because I adapted to what the people need. And, mm -hmm. you know, I, it, 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 it's just like that. Okay, let me dig a little deeper. Do you prefer one on ones to threesomes to groups, or does it really even matter? You know, uh, maybe if we, if we were going to talk about artistically, mm -hmm. One on one is, if I could say, the way to go, because it gives you the opportunity to be in the spotlight and do right. your job. Not only you as whatever position you are, if you are top, if you are bottom. I have my respect for three ways. In fact, one of my best things was a three way that I did with Miki Carpaccio and Soli Knight. Play that, and uh, if the if there's a chemistry between the three, and you can explode in into the screen, mm -hmm. uh, and you can uh, you can say you will like it very much. In fact, that scene of is available in Alpha Male's video. Uh, all the dicks you can you can, I think it's the, the name of, of the the DVD. So and the title, can you all, give us the title the of that you scene? you can have. Okay, everybody, all the dicks you can have. And we're not talking about private eyes either. We're talking, <laughs> we're talking. <laughs> 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 Listen, I had to say that. Okay, so it's all the, well, dicks, you, all the dicks you can have, right? All the dicks you can have. Uh, cool. And But the problem with, uh, with, uh, with threesome and also with um, groups is mm. that you might be doing your job. Maybe you have been doing something 
uh, excellent, but it's not guaranteed that it's going to be in the screen. Oh. Unless the footage is included somewhere in the film. Like oh. it, it used to happen with, with some of the... Uh, uh, with some of the famous uh, movies that includes groups like this, uh, this old one that I like very much, these bases are loaded. Mm -hmm. I think it's, it's, it's the example of a nice uh, group, group scene. Um, you know, a, 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 I did one for, uh, for, um, for, 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 um, Black breeders called the bareback uh, workout, mm -hmm. and in I haven't seen the scene complete, but there was some things that maybe uh, uh, that I did that was not, that was left in the editing room. I see. Then you know it's not guaranteed in group scenes that mm. you, that your work is gonna be uh uh gonna be shining. Does this got this a matter of not only of time or maybe I don't know if the production has uh, focusing one actor in specifically, you know, it's it is hard to tell. That's why I, I, I don't you know, I love to do group scenes. I love to do threesome. But uh, if I want to do it in a way that I could express myself artistically, uh, uh, we'll go with one to one. Great. What I want to do now is move on to a topic that is salient and burning tan credo, which is the way daddies or men of a certain age are presented in or and by the industry. I mean, because there is definitely a market for the older, more mature adult performer. So give us your take on it and, and let's talk about that. My experience with it, that part is that even though that they have the good intentions to uh, market um, men of certain age, because sexuality doesn't end at 40, like many people think. Right. But uh, sometimes I think that they don't include all the type of daddies that exist. And uh, I refer that they have a stereotype that the daddy got to be somebody who could be lean, hairy, mustache, and silver hair. And not all the daddies could be like that. They are daddies that are not stocky. They are mm. daddies that are old, older than, than, than the average, that still have a, a lot of sexuality. Uh, there are Latino daddies that uh, are the same way that works like any current uh, stereotypical daddy. There are black daddies mm -hmm. that can do a great job. But then some uh, sometimes I notice that when they try to uh, cast a daddy or what they call a daddy, is happened to be somebody that could be in, in easily in his 30s, early 40s. And not necessarily, I could say that's a daddy. Right, right. I mean, because I, when I think of a daddy in, in, in adult entertainment, I'm thinking at least, really, I'm thinking 50 and up. Uh, it's, it's what I, what, my concept of daddy is is somebody who's over over 50 mm -hmm. maybe 55 right and that could that could project a kind of authority father figure thing right and that could uh drive the younger uh, into a very frenzy sexuality or teach them a good lesson of sexuality no matter at what position it is. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Because there is a market for the older porn actor, the older, more mature adult performer. I'm, to me, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, I think it's an underserved market. 
a, a ki kind of because uh, once uh, 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 daddy's film, the daddy is not looked as somebody important. Mm. There are some exceptions to the rule, like Alan Silver and Scott Reynolds. That right. I could say they, they, they could be called a staple in the industry. But there are others that they just there and disappear. And mm. you don't know who they are. And then you ask it, to, oh, I see this actor in that movie. What's his name? You know, it's kind of, uh, they, yes, they are. We are here. But we are like a no present. Okay. Well, gosh. Okay. Um Let's specific, specific, let's specifically drill into drill down on black and brown performers of a certain age. Black and brown daddies, where do they fit into all of this? And you don't see uh, a lot of daddies, brown and black, performing. There were very, 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 very few, if I could say so. Uh, like, uh, like uh, trying to remember one that I work with that happens to have my same age, uh, Lance Longwood, very nice, very uh, nice black performer that in of certain age, good to uh, good to work with. Uh, I think he he retired after the scene that we we did, and but then you don't see more of that performer uh in, in the industry mm -hmm. and in fact the people uh, i i could dare to say um for forgive me any listener is that um our own people latin and black that runs companies they don't look at the daddy they don't mm. hire them they overlook them like if a piece of paper to the trash. Oh my God. They don't, you know, they don't explore our sexuality like some other companies does with uh, the white counterparts. And you see, it, it, that's why you see less and less of the type of daddy like me uh, on screen. If we get into a production, if I could say is that we're lucky. To, to do so for um I, I don't know the reasons they have the reason of marketing they got still um we think that they should explore that part of sexuality in in all this uh conglomerate that uh, it's the industry Wow, that's profound. Tancredo, you know, you're creating your own content. You are continuing to get work as a daddy of a certain age, a brown daddy of a certain age. So what is, how do you do it? What's your game plan? What's your, I mean, I've known you for a long time. You're very dedicated. You're committed. You're resourceful. Um, you have a plan, but tell us, tell the audience how you do it, how you are succeeding. I succeeded because I kept myself active in, in the media. Mm. Uh, most, most of the videos has, of my scenes have been keep rotating, which is a big surprise for me. I and that. it's an honor for, mm. for me. I, yes, uh, I try to create a plan B because not all the time you could think that you will be working in the industry. And if despite that it's a job, it's not a profession for all of us. For some people it is, for some other it's not. So I keep my cool. I keep my presence. I keep talking to people. Mm -hmm. uh, it's good to talk to the, to to your friends. Uh, 
one way or the other. Yes, they're going to be asking for some things, and you politely <laughs> stick that to decline. Um, but mm. uh, but uh, it's keeping in touch with my audience, what is keeping Tancredo alive. Yeah, you know what? And you're doing it because, you know, you are social media savvy and you're good with promotion. So I'm going to ask a, a silly question be, just because I want the audience to hear the answer. How important is it? How important is promotion, marketing, social media piece for a porn actor to excel to succeed because it's the way that he got to get in touch to sell the product this is a product you're selling mm. you know it's yes you did a job but your job doesn't end uh when the the director say cut the it is to go and spread the word about the scenes is spread about about your work to those who dedicate to be strippers or other professions got to show up they uh promote the, their product and you know to keep it active to keep the people interested to get that product mm. mm -hmm. yeah I, I i i get you so yeah you have to have the mentality that you are a product yes because actually i mean that's for any part of the entertainment business and be it an author, a writer, an actor, a comedian, you are the product. Yes, you are the product and you have to promote yourself. Nobody's going to do it for you. Mm. You know, uh, that's that's the way, the way to do it. Even though that it, you get, can get surprised, uh, some people who maybe did one scene and say, ah, these people doesn't call me. But it happens to be that that scene could be seen everywhere and you could be recognized for that scene. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's something that you have to keep alive. I, I still encourage people to look for my scenes in uh, even scenes that being so uh, a certain time ago, because for me, that is still, it's still occurring. It's my product. So, right. It keeps alive Tancredo and uh, the the evidence I got it with the writing of people and to people joining, following me in, on Facebook or further follow me on Twitter. Mm. My friend, I want to thank you again for appearing on Wyatt. I have one more question before I close out, and this is it. Tancredo, yes. what specific advice do you have for those guys who are seriously contemplating a move into the adult entertainment industry? What do you have to say to them? S simply that, number one, your face is going to be out there. So you have to be got the courage. If you want to be in this, you got to... Uh, be aware that it could be a consequences of that. Number two, that this is a job that yes, you could be the good friend and you can have the good body and mm -hmm. you can have everything. But if you don't know how to use it and you don't know how to project it, it's, it's a waste of time and it's a waste of money. They got to keep in mind that you are there uh, trying to make money for a production uh don't don't think about fame mm -hmm. don't think about anything else think that it's gonna be a job if you get famous fantastic number three very important respect your fans uh. respect your fans those are the one who click and buy the product if you go in a presentation you'll be recognized and you are not at least polite, even if it's not in your best day. Try to be polite with the people. Mm -hmm. And because those are the people who say, oh, my God, I met this actor. 
He's so sweet. He's a he's a charming. I think he wasn't having a, a a great day, but he was so sweet as at least to say hi. You know, uh, if you if you think because you don't know when the the the, the rock is gonna fall down, right? And once your fame or your work fade, only memories keep, mm-hmm. and that's what that's what is important and if you if you don't follow uh you don't find job or you don't want to continue in the industry after you've done your thing find something else to do and you know keep it as a batch because you're gonna be recognized everywhere once once you do done it and once you did it so and Tancredo, what do you have on tap for the rest of 2021? What's well, going tw- on? Well, 2021, in fact, I was sitting today planning for uh, next another scene that I'm going to do with Tony Cruz. Great. And I, I, am, I have something pending for uh, November, but I'm, I don't want to talk about it because they ha- I haven't had a confirmation Right. And also, well, for other things, I'm open for any collaboration with somebody, uh, no matter if it's a studio or in the personal matter. They just have to contact me uh, in my Twitter account or to tancredoboff at gmail.com. Okay, now, Tancredo, um, you have Facebook? Yes, I do. Oh, so give us grown folk all of your contact information so we can connect with you. In Facebook, I have two accounts. I have to open two accounts because one fill up very soon. So I ha- got to have a second one <laughs> oh. just in case. Um, and you, you just click the credit off and you, you will find me. Also, you can find me at the credit off in Twitter. And I, as it's still, those are the most mainly uh, websites that I'm frequent frequent to. Uh, all the matters where I keep it in private. I have very nice relationship with some people that I have keep um, into more friendship uh, status. Sure. And and I those are the one who knows my number and those who knows my personal email and we had a very nice contact but at least in facebook and in twitter i you can connect with me <clears throat> just the only warning i give to everybody is i don't accept faithless profile there's a lot of <laughs> there's a lot of uh fake profiles created yeah and i am the one who can go <clears throat> I see a request, I go to the profile, I see if it's a real person, if it's a person who constantly posting. Because if it's if I if it's a person who is uh tagged for other posting, it's very sure that it's a it's a fake profile. Gotcha. Well, Mr. Tancredo Buff, it's always a treat when you visit Wyatt. I want to thank you so much. You're welcome. You're welcome. And, you know, a big hug to all the people, to your listeners here and around the world. So there you have it. You can find the official Wyatt podcast page on WyattEvans.com. The official hashtag is Wyatt on air. If you want to be a guest on Wyatt, or you just have comments, email me at wyattonair at gmail.com. You can follow me, Wyatt O'Brien Evans, your host, on facebook.com slash Wyatt O'Brien Evans. Now look, there is no E in O'Brien. It's an A. That's how my mama wanted it. That's how she made it. All right? You can also follow me on Twitter, at Mr. Woe, M-I-S-T-E-R-W-O-E, on Instagram at Mr. Wyatt O, M-R-W-Y-A-T-T-O. 
A-T-T-O. And be sure to check out my Nothing Can Tear Us Apart series of novels, the latest being Frenzy. I said Frenzy, Frenzy, Frenzy. And its predecessor, R -R Rage, at WyattEvans.com. And like I said, I'm writing a sequel. I'm writing a sequel. It's going to be hot. It's going to be hot. Hotter, hotter, hotter than July. So until next time, woof, goddammit, woof, woof, woof. <laughs>